Hi guys and welcome back to how not to make a manifold. Now I say that because just now you've seen a few clips of me trying to piece together these welded runners back to their original position on the collector and on the head flange. Now what I should have done is I should have made a fixture to hold the head flange and the, the collector in the same position in relation to one another because now trying to piece this together is quite tricky. And I know I made this little thing which bolted to the head to hang the turbo where I wanted it to be, but it wasn't exactly accurate and it did move around a little bit. So what I'm now having to do is try to piece together the collector, the forerunners, the head flange, essentially in free air. And it's not particularly easy because each one of these runners could be out on a slight angle or rotation and that changes everything. Because if that's the first runner that gets welded to the head flange and the collector, then all the other runners are gonna be completely out. So what I've attempted to do is line up where the tacks were broken previously. And I've I kind of got that working. I've got three of the runners together and tacked to the head flange in roughly the right position. Angles might be slightly out, but it is generally there. I'm hoping what I'll do is weld all of these runners to the collector and then I'll put the end of the runners on the belt sander and flatten all of those off. I've also got to crimp the ends of these runners before I weld it to the head flange because the ports on the head are slightly overlized and obviously these are round tubes so I've got to do that as well. I'll probably do that before I hit the belt sander. Like I say I've got three of these runners together and the fourth one doesn't quite line up. I mean it's fairly close but it seems to be slightly long, which is a good thing because this has got a straight section in the middle of it. And it means that to shorten this, all I have to do is take a slither of this out and that should fit. Obviously hope it works because there are many, many man hours in this. And a couple of people have messaged me asking them to make them a manifold. Not a chance. Um, I'll be honest, I wish I hadn't even done this one myself. but. It was one of the challenges that I wanted to do, so I'm this far along. I'm going to see it through, and you'll see in this video a little bit later a few extra things that I want to do to this. I'm going to crack on and get to the exciting bit. <laughs> Right guys it's actually been a week since that last clip that you saw um, where I started crushing the ends of the runners so they would match the oval portholes of the manifold flange. So I stopped filming last week because I was getting slightly frustrated um, I couldn't get the ports to line up nicely and I just needed to turn the camera off and have a bit of a rethink of what was going on. I had a little bit of time the day after I just wanted to try a few things try and get this to work and it went pretty successfully as you can see here we are very flat on the flange now although it looks like it's not there because there's a bit of a bevel on this edge here which i need to carry on around here but they are nice and flat on there and the way that i achieved that is on the belt sander and to get them to overlies a bit nicer than they were you can see the crush marks here from putting it in the vise which kind of overlies it but because these are bends they didn't overlies very nicely so they kind of went a bit of a funny shape and what i'd found is where i welded all this together they didn't quite line up nicely with these runners here they do now because i used one of these if you don't know what one of these are it's an air chisel or an air hammer um, and basically pull the trigger and this goes in and out with some force uh, several times a second uh, and it's a pretty neat 
bit of kit. Now this is something that I've had in my garage for years and years. I think it was on sale in Lidl's for $9.99 or something like that, but I've never used it before. And I thought, ah, that might be perfect for what I need to do here. So what I did is I shaped the end and used that to work the inside these runners here and uh, overlies them a bit better and now they sit absolutely perfect obviously only three runners are on there at the moment fourth runner is just here i'm going to be doing that tonight hopefully get all four runners on and tacked into place and then what i can do is i can bolt this flange to the head and then get the runners welded fully so yeah sorry about missing out on some of the process there on video but it was frustrating me quite a lot and I just needed to stop filming and try and work out what I was doing experiment with a few things and uh, it seems to have worked out all right I'm gonna crack on get this fourth runner in place <laughs> Right, so the runners are now welded to the flange. And although it didn't take too long to do and it was quite a fun job, what made it worse was the fact that this mask, which was, I don't know, 110 pounds, I think like that, from Machine Mart, it was a load of crap, to be honest. I don't know how many times I've been flashed. I know that I'm gonna be suffering with Archive tomorrow. I can already feel my eyes are a little bit sore because the runners have been casting a shadow obviously or my own hands or whatever cast a shadow on the front of the mask and then it flashes me and then I can't see anything for the rest of the world and it's not even just a little flash it's constant it'll just go and then I'll just have to stop a world mid flow and it's really really I, I need to get a new mask because like I say that was quite painful so there we go the flange is all welded to the runners and you can see here i put a few holes in there that's because i'm going to be running egt's on every single runner so what i've done i've taken the original ones cut them back just so they're uh, a little bit shorter because normally they've got a tapered thread on the end and you put a larger hole in here and uh, basically cut some thread into the manifold but i've decided not to do that i've cut these back and they're obviously going to get welded directly to each one of the ports and these ones here you can see that was the original tape thread and i've ground an angle down on there so it fits on there so this is the orientation of the manifold in the car so i'm doing it underneath the reason for that will become clear you'll find out what's in that turbo smart box there in the next episode but yeah i'm going to weld these to here and the cables are going to run on the inside here. I'm obviously going to heat shield them, make sure that they last because these are 80 quid each. And yeah, I've got four of them, but these worlds have gone really well. I was quite happy that I managed to do them in a single run, obviously with starts and stops, but started in one point, followed the weld all the way around, all in the same direction on every single one uh, instead of you know doing a bit of a weld here and then welding from the other side in the in the another direction and as you can see they are all quite neat actually um quite happy with that obviously i had this bolted to the head put straight edge on here and uh, yeah it stayed completely flat so i don't need to have this faced off which is nice and i can keep the thickness in the flange um and oh one thing i've also done almost forgot but it did take ages is I've taken the die grinder and matched the ports out on the inside of every single one of these and what I intend to do I'm going to try and get torch in there and try and fusion weld all the way around the inside of each one of these so it's nice and smooth and hopefully welding the inside will reduce the chance a crack forming on the inside of these runners because I've just welded another manifold 
not mine, someone else's manifold because it's done the same thing, although that was welded on the inside. But yeah, you'll probably see in a video soon. Uh, no guesses for whose that is. Gonna fire up the TIG, get these bad boys welded on. There we go, that is all welded up. Each one of these EGTs and welded up on the inside. Last thing to do is stick a hole in here for the wastegate. Well, that was a bit of an awful job and it has killed my Makita drill, so I need to get a new one of them. This is the plan, that's gonna go on there, except I've got to profile this. I've gotta cut some bits out of here and shorten this, but I want to have a little bit of a downward angle on it. So that will go there, weld that on, and then yeah, that's pretty much that done. So there we are, that is the tube profiled to fit the manifold. I've put a little bevel on there as well. I've cut it to length, and that fits very nicely on the manifold just there. It only took the one attempt, um, no, I lie, actually, it took a couple more than uh, one attempt, which I suppose would be three attempts. It took a few more than that, I have to say. It was just a case of grinding little bits off at a time until it fitted as well as I could get it to fit quite tightly there. I've obviously got to weld that to the manifold, but before I do that, I'm going to have to weld this wastegate flange onto the end here. That's got to go first because I won't be able to get to the back side of here very easily to weld that on properly. I don't have a chill block that fits on this, but I do have a wastegate. I'll V-band that onto the bottom of the wastegate, which will keep that flat. Pop that on there, weld that. Ideally, this should be back purged. It's going to be a little bit tricky, I'll be honest, trying to get the line in here. I don't have proper purge bungs, and obviously this is very short so a lot of the heat will get to the line but hopefully I can make that work and then once that's welded there I'll then weld that directly to the manifold. That's very not the best. Keep getting flashed by my uh, welding helmet still which is a right pain in the ass but hey ho it's on there. So the wastegate flange is now welded to the manifold. And I don't know if you saw in the video because I had an issue with the memory card and it didn't save. You can see in there, all welded internally and that was a bit of a challenge. So all the way down there and I've also welded all around the top here as well. So that's all welded and on the inside of the flange as well. So welded inside and out and that's come out Really well, really happy with how that's turned out. So now we come to this, the anti-lag valve. So I'll wait till the next episode for that. So there we go, guys. That is part four of this mini series of how to make a manifold. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and leave a comment down below. If you've got any questions, I do try and answer every single one. Hopefully soon, once we get this cracked out, we will be working on this generally and there's some fairly big news actually if you follow the instagram account you already know but uh, it's to do with the transmission but yeah i'm gonna wrap this video up now i'll see you in the next one cheers